pretty awesome being here <laughs> in person. I must admit, I, I haven't I haven't done that uh, for, for quite some time. I see some familiar faces and I see a little bit of butterflies here, which is pretty cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, my name is Jacob and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Butter. Um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about what we, um, well, product market fit at Butter and how we, how we deal with measuring it and, and how we've dealt so far with finding it. Firstly, uh, what is Butter? Well, this is Butter. Uh, Butter is basically a video conferencing tool that allows facilitators to both uh, set up, run, and debrief online sessions in one tool instead of eight to 15 different ones that they'd otherwise use for their collaborative sessions. And essentially, we wanna be the go-to platform for synchronous online sessions, owning this little space where uh, sessions are synchronous, not asynchronous, and where sessions are collaborative and not simply status update or, or non-collaborative. It gives you a little idea of what it is we're doing. But um, that's not what I'm here to talk about today. I'm here to talk about product market fit. And product market fit is this famed creature that I think a lot of you guys have heard about. Um, everyone talks about it. Everyone talks about it. Everyone talks about how important it is to find this famed creature, um, but a lot of people are also very unsure about how to find it and whether they have actually found it. Um, I, I looked a little bit on the Wikipedia definition, which is always fun. It kind of gives you an idea of what is the high-level definition of this. And, and the, the product market fit is the degree to which a product uh, solves a strong market demand. So it's the fit between what you're building and what the market actually wants. Um, and a lot of people have likened, or I think actually it was Emma Cheer, the, the co-founder of Twitch, that likened the, the finding of product market fit to, to, to Sisyphus pushing up the boulder. And before you found product market fit, it's this very tough uh, uh, journey of pushing the boulder up the hill. It feels feels incredibly, incredibly arduous. And everything you're doing, every single new user, every single new customer that you try to bring into the fold feels super tough. And once you've got product market fit, you suddenly feel the boulders running, is rolling down the, is rolling down the hill, and uh, it's super arduous as well, because you have to kind of catch up to this boulder, uh, but it's, it's, it's tough in a very, very different way. Other ways to kind of define this very nebulous concept of product market fit is, is this one from, from Mark and Driesen that says that the customers are buying a product just as fast as you can make it or usage is growing just as fast as you can add more servers. Again, this, this huge pull from the market for what you are building. And another one which I really like and which maybe um, applies quite a bit to, to, to earlier uh, startups is, is this quote from, from Sequoia's Dun, Dun Valentine which is when, when the customers want your product so badly that you can screw everything up and still succeed. Even though your product is super broken, it's barely working, they're still using it and they still keep on using it. Again, we've found three things, at least for us, that, that have been super important when thinking about this concept because you can hear that all of these different ways of describing product market fit, they're, they're, they're very, <laughs> the very um, uh, qualitative and they're not super easily identifiable. So there's kind of three things that, that, that I want to talk about today in terms of what we've done in Butter in terms of addressing product market fit. The first thing has been to measure from day one and understand what we need to measure in terms of understanding whether we've reached the summit of the hill. The second thing is just segmenting, segmenting, and segmenting, because very often this whole idea of finding product market fit, it's not with everyone that you find product market fit, it's with a certain sub-segment of your user that you find product market fit. So if you focus on everything, you might actually lose the tiny area or slightly larger area where, you're, where, where product market fit is emerging. And the third thing is that pricing is the absolute test of product market fit. Without introducing pricing, you cannot actually be 100% sure that you've truly found it. First area is measure. So with Butter, we've uh, chosen three different ways to measure product market fit. Retention, product market fit score, and percentage of organic growth. The first thing is retention rates. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you guys have seen these, these curves before, but they're essentially cohort retention rates. So newer uh, cohorts of users 
they appear as, as um, uh, lines. And the higher those lines are uh, for newer cohorts, the better the people are sticking around. Again, the retention rate essentially measures how large a percentage of users that you onboard at day one stick around at week four, at week eight, and so on and so forth. So again, what we measure very uh, stringently is how many people stick around after they have used Butter for a certain period of time. And we, we look at how newer cohorts of users that have been brought on, they, uh, they stick around. Again, it's important to say here that the reason why you're looking at newer cohorts is because your product hopefully changed over time and therefore should be more sticky. But there's also a certain uh, uh, um, what can you say, risk in terms of looking at, at these cohorts because there can be a lot of different types of users in that. And I'll get back to that in terms of segmentation. Product market fit score is the second one that we're using. Uh, and this is something that was introduced by, uh, by the founder of, of, of Superhuman, Rahul Wara, uh, and basically measures, it's a survey where you ask, how disappointed would you be if you could no longer use this product? There's a lot of uh, d different uh, uh, smaller things to this, this survey, but it's that key question. And people can answer not disappointed, somewhat disappointed, and very disappointed. And what this measures is basically how large a percentage of people answer very disappointed. Pretty, pretty simple. And then you basically track how does that develop over time, and do you pass what at least they've established as a magical line of 40%. The third thing that we are measuring is organic growth. So whether people are telling other people about your product and how large a percentage of people are joining your product just by having heard of it, not through ads or, or sales. Uh, the larger percentage of people that are joining through organic means, the closer you are to product market fit. So again, three core metrics being tracked. Uh, week four, week eight, week 20 retention rates. So the closer and then the longer retention rate in terms of where do things look uh, further down the line. Product market fit score, so the percentage of uh, surveyed respondents that answer very disappointed. And the organic growth, which is the percent of users that come from organic sources. The second thing that we focus a lot on is segmentation, because it's all very nice to have these very clear measures that we can, we can look at. And we can look at these measures in terms of all users that are popping into, into, into Butter. Um, but again, as, as Paul Graham, the, the founder of Y Combinator says, it's, it's, it's better to have 100 people love you than a million people that just sort of like you. And it's important to find these 100 people. So again, we, uh, in Butter, we, we video conferencing tool absolutely exploded or during COVID. Um, but a lot of these users were simply not relevant users. And a lot of these users, or we had at least the hypothesis that a lot of these users would not stick around once, uh, uh, once the world opened up. So it was super important for us from very early days to figure out which 100 users, or well, in our case, a bit more, but should we, should we be building for uh, in, in the longer term? So what we've done is segment users in two different ways. The first way is self-selection. So whenever users join Butter, they are, uh, they are subjected to something like this, where they can choose, you know, what's your, I think it's like, what's your position? Uh, well, I can't see that. Like, what best describes your current role? What are you primarily using Butter for? How big is your company? And who do you want to use Butter with? Is it your clients? Is it your team? Or is it both? So again, this is a self-selection process. It's reasonably good. It helps us somewhat know, hey, what type of user are we dealing with here? Is it a, a small, single individual? Is it a big company? Is it, is it, a, is it a teacher or is it a, a consultant? The second way that we are segmenting is not through self-selection, but through behavior. Um, so we also look very diligently at what kind of behaviors do users have um, once they are in Butter. So you, we've actually seen a lot of people, the, the reason why self-selection is good is uh, or is, is not uh, um, what you say the only thing you should use is because self-selection doesn't always work. People often choose the wrong box uh, and we've got users from, for instance, Taiwan and Brazil that might not be as, as fluent in English and therefore do not select correctly. So therefore, uh, behavior is also super, super important. So for instance, here we, we in Mixpanel, uh, which is our product analytics tool, we, we look at users that have certain behaviors, such as having a certain number of workshops uh, every month. Uh, and, and that would, for instance, be our, our power user cohort that we would segment based on. Um, and uh, then we have, what you say, we use, the, we use a, 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 actually a third way of self-selection, which is surveying users in the superhuman style survey. 
uh, where we ask how disappointed you are. In that question, there's also a question of what kind of person do you think would benefit most from butter? And, if, and there you have people write up out their own answer on who would benefit the most. And if they think that they themselves are ones that would benefit the most, this is also a self-selection criteria. And this allows us to identify users that truly love us. Uh, for instance, here we, we see, based on the self-selection criteria in the beginning, a uh, what we say an average number of uh, workshops that a person would have every month. Uh, so we, we're using this we can see both types of criteria to to identify how um, or to segment our, our full user base. Okay, so now we have some idea of of a of a specific segment. We know what to measure, and we see that this small segment, oh, they're just they, they're just amazing on all the different metrics that we're measuring, and, and we're pretty sure that there's a segment because we can see it both in the self-selection and we can see it in, in the analytics that they, they, they really, truly do love butter. Uh, so wouldn't that be enough to know that we've got product market fit with the segment? And for us, the answer was sadly a resounding no with a key segment. Um, because the third thing kind of comes into play, and that's, that's price. So are people truly ready to pay for your product? Uh, oh, yeah, that was a question I just asked. Again, in uh, 2021, Butter was growing fast with educators, with teachers. We actually had a what we call the teacher explosion in Taiwan, because the Ministry of Education in Taiwan uh, started promoting Butter on their Twitter. And we saw like Taiwanese education users sign up in droves. It was uh, during a lockdown because they had 100 COVID cases every day. So bad. Um, but all the schools were closed, all the universities closed, et cetera. So we saw a lot of Taiwanese education users sign up. We had amazing retention scores for this period, which lasted quite several months. Uh, we had great PMF scores. They said, oh, we'd be super disappointed. We wouldn't know what to do if we can use the butter anymore. Uh, all acquisition was organic. It was teachers telling teachers about butter. Uh, and we had extremely high engagement. So each uh, teacher was spending 10 plus hours per week uh, on, on, on butter. So all of these metrics, like we have a super clear segment. They absolutely love us. That should be enough, right? So in September of last year, we announced pricing. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, and we introduced it in October. And this is the graph of teachers using butter. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, so uh, no, that was simply simply not enough because what we found out was that butter was simply the most amazing free alternative to uh, other tools that the teachers had access to. Um, and what we then also saw was other groups that we did not think were as important because they'd sim simply been, been lost in the, 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 the noise of this, especially this teacher group, uh, they suddenly proved to be very important. So we have, for instance, here we have free users and we've got paid users and we have the different segments that we, that we use here. And we saw that paid users in ideation and brainstorm segment, which is uh, uh, especially our agencies, we've got people doing design sprints, people using us for brainstorms, they were using us a lot after they began paying. Uh, and that's, for instance, one of the segments that we've been, been leaning in quite, quite heavily after that. So, therefore, pricing is the ultimate litmus test for product market fit. Um, and now I'm going to tell you how to find it. Number one predictor of whether a company will find product market fit, high shipping cadence. So, <laughs> uh, this was butter in, I think, beginning of February 21. Then we have butter in, uh, this was until October 2021, butter from until I think January 22, and then butter how it looks now. And I know some of this doesn't look, but it, it, it changes a lot. The whole infrastructure has changed. A lot of features have been added. Again, we keep on shipping and shipping very fast. That's the only way that we believe that you can actually find product market fit. And honestly, nothing matters. Now, a lot of the stuff you do, you can, you can play startup, but nothing matters unless you find, unless you find product market fit, at least from, from our humble experience. Um, so yep, three plus one takeaways. Measure from day one, segment, segment, segment. Pricing is the ultimate test, and then keep on shipping. Uh, oh yeah, one important thing is, it's not like, again, Ben Horowitz, he says this whole thing about, it isn't one discrete point in time that announces itself. It's, it actually kind of uh, appears uh, uh, um, uh, somewhat slowly in, in these corners of your segments. Yep. That's it. <laughs>